How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy May 19th. May 19th. That is a day. That's a scary day. A certain man in a red outfit shows up, and he takes your soul on that day. A lot to talk about today. To build to AW Double or Nothing. In case you weren't aware, it's now a triple main event. We're going to break that down for you. King and Queen of the Ring preview. There's a pay-per-view next Saturday. That's going to be interesting because I, I wonder, it should be over by the time we, we do the show. Well, it's not going to matter. I miss, mix the days. That's a Saturday. We do the show on Sunday. But we do have a pay-per-view on Sunday, too. Too many pay-per-views. Friday Night SmackDown also we'll get into. AW Collision and Rampage. And also, a little tidbit this week regarding the AW TV rights update. There is a slight update here. We're going to go into that also. Busy week coming up. A tremendously busy week coming up in the world of professional wrestling. Also, all the news and everything else that's happening. Um, it's been a lot of discourse happening on social media about the current state of AEW. Do they really have a fundamental problem or is it just optics? Is it just, you know, they're not the flavor of the month anymore, which they were for a while. I kind of want to talk to our producer about that because he's been here for the whole journey. And a whole lot more today. But man, this triple, this triple main event lineup for Double or Nothing I'm curious how they're going to place all of these because if you look at I mean, the card is really good. John Moxie Takeshita. Where the hell does that go? We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more today on the show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's go into some of the news here. Uh, I got a tremendous amount of people asked me about this and I could kind of go into it. I didn't have all of this, but. It's interesting. Uh, you know, the upfronts were on Wednesday. And I had said, people, you know, I get asked this constantly. When is the AW deal up? When is it happening? When is it happening? And you really, it was set to happen first or second quarter uh, late last year. I was told that the deal would most likely be done by then. And 5,000 different things happened, including NBA rights. That was always a priority. This new streaming, sports streaming service. What is it? Disney, Fox, and WBD came up with the worst name. What's the name, Matt? Vino? Vimo? Venue. Venue. It's Venue. So, a lot of moving parts. I can say that there was a... They were very close to signing some piece of this deal early in the year. And that was most likely to do with streaming and not with... TV rights because they were still negotiating that and I think everybody opted to do a bundle negotiate everything together as per Fightful Select Sean Ross Apple Fightful Select he reported that they were told that the announcement of the new deal is expected to be kept very close to the vest and it's, it's a summer or fall likely announcement sure the exclusivity window for AW and WBD continue into the summer though there's no firm date on when that ends they're still working on it. There's a, there's nothing bad happening here, you know? But the bigger question is, okay, so what kind of number do they receive? What kind of rights deal do they get? You know, there was that $250 million a year number that was being thrown around. I have no idea where that number came from. Uh, I would say that that is on, on the high end, if, if it's even remotely possible. But you could kind of, if you if you follow sports rights, you could kind of figure out where it should kind of land realistically. But, you know, there is a ratings decline happening. There is a viewership decline happening. But how bad is it? You know, you have to look at the landscape of television here. And I think that is something that people omit, you know, especially wrestling fans, especially people that, that read about wrestling the way that they consume media on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, on the websites. If you look at TV as a whole, there is a tremendous decline. But that's 
not saying they're not in their own organic decline. This is not a this is not a uh, manufactured. Some of it is by just TV and positioning of TV and and what's happening overall as a landscape. But you still looking at these numbers, you're gonna you're gonna start questioning it, and especially if they want you know a hundred and twenty million a year or a hundred dollar hundred million dollars a year guaranteed by WBD. Six hundred and eighty thousand viewers is not the number you want. You know, I would say being in the eights, being in the nines is super, super healthy for them. The high sevens, fine. But how do you justify $100 million? I think that's why the bundling and everything is going to kind of make sense here. But the other side, you know, Matt, you're a baseball fan, you know? Yes. Um, Dave had a great point on Observer Radio with Garrett. He was talking about, you know, convincing people that the Super Bowl is the biggest thing to need to watch. Right, we have we, the people have been convinced that this is a major thing to watch. That's why those numbers are monstrous. You look at baseball, and they're doing a point oh eight mm -hmm. in the key demo. I, I mean, how do you justify those kind of numbers? A point two three is it terrible? No, it's not terrible. They're always third or fourth for dynamite, sometimes second. But I think all this is going to play big play play a big part, especially the NBA rights thing. You know. Uh, is it a positive or negative for AEW? When you talk about not having the NBA on Turner, I, I don't know yet, but I would say if you're talking about freeing up money, yeah, it's easier to justify paying AEW a few bucks more now. What do you make of this, Matt? Uh, I find it fascinating. So as a sports fan, um, you're right. You're right in the sense that I don't like how they uh, go about um, presenting this sometimes and how the TV rights are, are everybody makes it a big deal about the number. When I, when I look at it, I look at what's, what's hot that night. And that in, to me, it's just win the night. Yeah. Not overall, you know? Um, so when you're going up against other things, how do you stack up? And largely, AEW does does fairly well. They do well. They have they have a very they have a core dedicated following that will tune in every week, and that that's that's mm -hmm. great, that's fantastic. But I don't know. You know, you look at. I, I'm curious how NXT is going to do on Tuesdays on CW. They announced that they're going to be on Tuesdays. They're keeping the time slide eight to ten. Be interesting. But we yeah. know how much they're getting. And those ratings are not that far off. So now you're going to have to talk about, okay, what's what's brand? Now is the value of the brand. Obviously, the AEW value, I, I would say it's higher than NXT's as a brand. Just for the yes. sheer... And it's only going to get stronger. It gets a it gets more of a market, right? It gets it gets more... Uh, there There's more people, more celebrities know about it. You have more interaction on, in the Turner Network. Yeah, and the WBD absolutely. Network, uh, absolutely. Family. You know, Absolutely. they just added that that digital show that people are kind of meal and a match with Renee and uh, RJ. By the way, go check it out. RJ's a good guy. Uh, I I was so I happy it was when fantastic. I fantastic. Yeah, great job. You know, and it's an homage to to uh, to dinner and a movie, which I I, I I've been hearing rumblings <laughs> that they want to bring that, that. back. <laughs> they want to bring dinner and a movie back, which I would love to, I would love for that to happen. But Eddie listen, Kingston, it's different. Uh, saying he wants to. Uh, Go, take uh, Ricky Starks going on a date. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> I mean, listen, it, it was a it was a good product. I hope they do more of these. But you know, there is major synergy between the two brands. Uh, the people at WBD very much like that they have a first run program, five hours a week, fifty two weeks a year, and that is a very unique thing to get. Opposed to having the NFL for you know sixteen to eighteen weeks or whatever time frame you know outside of playoffs you could get. These are all things to consider. Something else here to consider. AEW is running um, a summer series in Arlington. Is that the week that the o NFL owners, like, is that the NFL owners time frame? No. no. No, the owners meeting has already taken place. It has. So is there anything to yeah. do with the NFL? Because I'm trying to justify, you know, or find, I, I should ask, I, why are you on, running you so many dates? Matt, yeah, you asked me on Matt Men, and I looked it up. I couldn't find any NFL-related thing that weekend. So, so this is the I mean, Arlington Esports Arena. The venue yes. holds about twenty-five hundred seats, which it's a new venue, so it's going to look nice. They're running Collision on the twentieth, Death Before Dishonor on the twenty-sixth. 
Collision on the 27th. Collision on the 1st, which is a Thursday. They're taping for Saturday the 3rd. Collision the 10th and the 17th. So they're doing a residency, I guess, with Collision here. And I, I'm trying to... Listen, it could have just been a conversation of, hey, you want to try this? Mm -mm. But can you get 2,500 or 2,000 every single week in that building? I, I don't know. Like you're going to have to make these tickets very affordable. Or, or, or there's a partnership back. of some sort where yeah. they kind of sell them for you. They move them for you, you know? Right. Because this is, this is similar to what NXT has to do, and those people fill out all the time. So, well, not really. I mean, yeah, but NXT, what, what was, what is it like? Two hundred people. It used to be two, three hundred people. Now it's less. Mm -hmm. How many people are in that building? One hundred and fifty people. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's uh, something also like that. Too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm curious if this is part of a long term thing, or this is just, hey, let's just, you know, cut the budget a little bit and do a residency here. I don't but know. They're really not doing a residency because they're they're going to dynamite. Dynamite's in other cities. Dynamite's in other cities. Yeah, very interesting. By the way, dynamite's number was six seventy two last week. A lot of sports happening. I, like I'm I'm sucked into the NBA right now. You know, and the NHL. That that it just naturally happens every year for me and a lot of other people. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the pay per views next weekend, both WWE and AEW. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's talk about SmackDown. They're continuing the Queen and King of the Ring tournament. Bianca Belair defeated Tiffany Stratton to advance in the Queen of the Ring tournament. Did you hear about the controversy about this? Apparently, Tiffany posted oh, a video on social media, and it was insulting to, and... People were very much thinking this was going to be some sort of punishment. This match was canceled, and it was heat on her, and it seemed like none well, of it was, was true. there was two things going on. There was two things going on with this. Yeah. Uh, Montez Ford updated his uh, uh, Twitter profile to say he had a, another kid, say three kids. So people freaked out and thought she was pregnant oh right before God, the okay. match. Okay. And it went, and then, and then him and Angelo Dawkins, they kept changing the number. On his profile. That's start. So by the end of it, he had like seven kids. Great. And so it was just, it was just a big, to do, a big nothing. Yeah. And the Tiffany part was the same thing. It was just like it was something she said, and they, they were like, yeah, whatever. There was no heat on her. Yeah, there was no heat. But this was, uh, you know, Tiffany's been good. They're she's, presenting she's, her in a very high place, which is great. You I think, need to do that I with think stars. She's gonna be. She's she's the next big superstar. Yeah, uh, she will be big for them. Yeah, a super athlete. Tama Tonga defeated LA Knight to advance in the King of the Ring tournament. This went about eight and a half minutes, nine minutes. Contract signing, Logan Paul, Cody Rhodes. So I, I before we go into this, you know, just visually, mm -hmm. I like, like, they both look like they're people. You know what I mean? Like, they're somebody's. Yes. Standing up there. And this, and, and this contract signing came off that way. And, and this contract, seem, uh, contract signing definitely came off that way. I... Very much like the big presentation of two champions in this company. One is a world heavyweight champion. The other one is the U.S. champion. Uh, I, I thought it was interesting. They finally got a way out of here. Logan Paul brought his lawyers, tears up the original contract, and presents a new one where the U.S. title is not on the line. All right. You know what? I could get behind that. They, they at least explained the story to us. You know, They in, gave in us a little past, bit. They've They've done, they've just said, oh, by the way, this is at, right before the match starts. Uh, the, uh, this title isn't down the line. And you're like, what? <laughs> so Yeah, player, I, I mean, I, and I good. think these guys are going to work really hard together. I think Cody knows the Logan Paul reach. Uh, Logan knows that he has to look great here. His brother's fighting Tyson in, Tex in Arlington. There we go. Back to Arlington, Texas. Are you intrigued by that Tyson fight, by the way? I'm so into it. I'm morbid curiosity is probably how I, I'm looking at it. Morbid curiosity. Um, I really want to mm -hmm. see how, you know, you got the greatest, one of the, arguably the greatest of all time, if not top mm -hmm. five, you know, or you could, wherever you want to place Mike. But right. against a 27 year old 
you know, really decent boxer. A professional yeah, heavyweight he's, he's, championship yeah, level? He's... Probably not. But does it matter for him not to be? 27 versus 57. He's going to be 58 by the time of the fight. So I'm very intrigued. <laughs> Listen, not the same 58, though. You know, everybody's on peptides. They're on uh, yes. semaglutides. They're taking uh, TRT. They're doing all this muscle stimulation and all these other things. So it's very different being an athlete in your 50s versus, you know, 30 years ago. You know, a 40-year-old was washed up. Remember that. Right. 36 was washed up. John Cena was 36 years old. People were talking, when is he going to retire? It's time. Mm -hmm. Hulk Hogan, same thing, right? Oh, man, he's past his prime. He's 40. He's turning 40. It's over. Career's over. It's a young man's sport. Times are different. Nia Jax defeated Jade Cargill via DQ. I thought this was interesting how they did this. They highlighted yeah, Jade's was. daughter also. It was and good. Her, the her daughter was great. Her daughter, yeah, the daughter, her daughter was great. Yeah. The DQ finish was not great. People didn't no, want to see and, that. And I understood why they did it because uh, I have a feeling they're I have a feeling they're giving this crown to Nia, which I hate because not really a Nia fan, but um, I see what they're doing here, kind of progressing forward without beating Jade clean. Okay. All right. Cool. You don't want to do that. So you don't want to do that. DIY defeated Legado del Fantasma. Eight and a half minutes. It was good. Legado's good. Umberto's good. Angel's good. Raisin Wade Barrett talked about the mysterious QR code. So if you missed this, this is interesting. Uh, on... Thursday afternoon, the Twitch feed to WWE was hacked for like an hour. And it was this creepy video of a chair that was empty most of the time. And then this lady showed up. What was she saying? She was, uh, it was basically a therapy session. She was a therapist and she was, had the part, subject in front of him, which was the camera. And you and she's talking and you hear someone writing something like writing out things and handing her notes and she's getting up and getting these notes and reading them the whole time there's these all these creepy images that they've showed in the qr codes kept showing up over and over something about i've let them i've freed them i let them out i let them out and it all led to the end where he goes do you want to meet them and she said sure and all of a sudden it went black and they show that um uh article that newspaper article oh, where, where she they, went missing where she was missing yeah yeah so so it's a whole like so who who do you yeah. think is in this group obviously uh, um, uh Bo, right he's uncle howdy i hope they call him something else i thought that name was really dumb i yeah, it was i yeah and apparently you showed up on monday did you see that they did a wide angle and there was a spotlight with him like standing in the arena on Monday. Oh, I didn't. I oh, you I didn't, didn't see that. that. You missed it. Wow. No. Yeah, so they, they come back from a break or they came back from something. They panned. It was a wide pan, and you see a spotlight, and it's, the, and it's him with the hat on. Just a silhouette, basically? Just, just like, yeah, essentially like a silhouette just standing mm -hmm. there. So, I mean, okay, fine. Uncle Howdy, who else? Uh, we're hearing Eric Rowan, right? Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. The interesting one is is supposedly it's not going to be um, Alexa, but it's going to be Nikki Cross instead. That's what somebody, and I think Nikki could yeah. do a great job. Mm -hmm. Great, great job well, Nikki well, could we'll do because she was great in Sanity. She played that role really well. Oh, she's she's fantastic. I hope she's. I know she's been busy doing her uh, PhD and 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 studying and doing that, and that's why she's been off a lot. But yeah. Yeah, I think I think that'll be I'm curious, you know, and, and here's the other thing, right? WWE and we spoke about this on Mattman. WWE's gotten so serious over the last, you know, six months, eight months. You know, from prior from like Survivor Series on even even all of last year, you know, the bloodline stuff. I, I'm very curious how this is going to go over because of the big sports feel presentation that they've done. Mm hmm. 
you know, for, for almost over a year now. You know, since Vince left, it's it's changed gradually, obviously, but it's gotten way more of a sports feel when you're watching this. Will the goofy, you know, mysticism and the, the spookiness and the lightning bolts, will that continue to work for them? I mean, if you sprinkle in less, I think it's better. I think that's less is more in this case. And they they just jumped the shark years and years ago on it. And if you go back to that, I think it'll work. Like the time. pandemic era, you know, they set they set Bray yeah, on well, fire and they did the possession right? stuff. OK, great. Fine. I, I get why they do things. I know Alexa that it's Bliss, the Alexa possession. Lighting trusses, lighting yeah. trusses on Randy Orton. On Ra- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with her mind. <laughs> uh, uh, that she has the power of, of of telepathy and telekinesis now. You know, she's Jean Grey. <laughs> I, 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 will that go over well? I don't know. And I don't, I would, I'm, I'm willing to bet that they're going to lean farther away from the spooky and more into like, oh, yeah, he's, you know, psychologically messing with people. Because that's that always the best the... explanation, you know? Yeah, he doesn't have the power of lightning, but he makes it seem like he does to mess with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this um, is the company that got the Undertaker the over. So. That goes so into that goes the main, into the main event. event. Yeah, yeah well, well, this match I thought was really good. Um, Randy Orton defeated Carmelo Hayes, but... Um, one thing, and I'm going to ask you about this before we go. We'll break up the the semifinals or this week. Yeah. But how are you feeling about these matches? Um, because I'm liking that they're letting everything breathe. Uh, they've they've tripled the amount of uh, time the women are getting on all these matches. They're letting them breathe, and they're really good matches. Well, I, I think no, the women's no. matches were really good. Uh, and, yeah. and I think that's why you're seeing so much of it because they really, it, it really did do a good job at displaying, you know, their top tier or close mm-hmm. to their top tier in that roster. The men's was great too. I very much enjoyed it. I mean, I thought, I thought it's, it's fun. Carmelo Hayes and Randy Orton. That's not a match yeah. I thought I would see. Orton gave him a lot. Orton, Orton gave, gave him, him a lot, ton. Him look good. Right. Yeah. And in the end he won. So that was exactly what it was. King and the queen of the ring semis for raw. You got Gunther and Jey Uso. Io Sky and Valkyria. Lyra Valkyria. <laughs> Lyra. I'm sorry. Lyra. All right. I think Io takes it, right? She should, yeah. She should. And I think Gunther should take this. Or maybe not. Maybe Gunther does not become the king. Maybe, maybe it's Jey Uso. You can wear that crown. They're selling it. Did you see? Yeah. SmackDown, you're going to get Randy Orton and Tama Tonga, Bianca Belair, and Nia Jax. And I believe Tonga Loa will be in action on SmackDown. We'll see how that goes. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the pay-per-view, Collision, and Double or Nothing. A lot to talk about here. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Do me a favor, follow me on X, at Andrew Zarian. If you want to follow me on Instagram, too, you can, at Andrew Zarian. Let's talk about the pay-per-view. King and Queen of the Ring coming up on Saturday from Saudi Arabia. Undisputed WWE Championship on the line. Cody Rhodes defends against Logan Paul. The women's world champion, Becky Lynch, defends against Liv Morgan. Man, I want Liv to take this. Me, too. I like this. I'm into Liv. You know, I always... I always get behind her push, and then something happens, and then it stops. Listen, but I'm biased. Northeastern girl, loves pizza. How can you not get behind Liv? It's that Queen's jersey, you know, (laughs) upbringing, I guess. Intercontinental champion Sami Zayn defends against Bronson Reed and Chad Gable in a triple threat match. This is going to be a fantastic match. King of the Ring Tournament Finals. It's either going to be Gunther or Jay versus Randy or Tama. What do you think the match should be here? Looking at this. Gunther oh, I, and Orton? Um, that's the Yeah, that's the money one. But the interesting bloodline one, Jay versus Tama would be interesting too. Jay versus um, Tama would be great where yeah, Jay Uso because wins that, it. That'll, that'll wrap back into the bloodline story. And Dude, and he can sell around. you a ton of these crowns. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, theor- theoretically, it should be Gunther versus Orton, but um, they King Orton. But remember, he, you could do King Orton. 
Oh, yes. You can and that, and that wraps I mean, back into Harley Race having it, him he, being a big fan of Harley Race. Yeah, and him being a big fan of Harley Race. Or you could do uh, Tama Tonga getting it. Remember, King Haku. Yep. You could do that, too. I mean, you, there, there's a lot of these things. I, it, it, this a makes a lot of sense. There. I love it when it all makes sense. You know? I love it when it all makes it's sense. You could do something with Randy. About Randy's never won the King of the Ring. And I think he could do something cool with that. He, does he need it? No. I think I think the bigger question here, I think Gunther, Jay, and Tama could do it. I think Jay would be, if you're selling merch behind this, I would put it on Jay. Mm-hmm. Dude, you saw those Jordans? Those uh, those Roman Reigns Jordans? Yes, I did. I can't Fantastic. wait for those. Those look great. You also have the women's king, uh, women's queen of the ring finals: Io Sky, Lyra, or Bianca Belair, and Nia or Nia. Maybe Nia takes it. You're right. We'll see. Yeah. Collision last night. Let's go into this. Collision last night. It's a fun show always. I never have a problem with this show because it's a wrestling show. What'd you think of it? Yeah, it was, again, you're right. It was great wrestling. This opener, Will Ospreay and Shane Taylor. Yeah. Will Ospreay hit his, um, oh, what's his move? I can't think of the name of the move, but he hit that move on, um, it's the one where he flips him in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and on Shane Taylor, who is, well above 300 pounds yeah i was like wow he's he's putting on some size and some muscle because he's just no he's will, my will's, wrestler. yeah will will, 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 will has fantastic. become he's a great hybrid wrestler yeah. uh i thought that was a great opener I, and and look at you know he's not living in the states this yeah. guy is flying yeah, back he's... home to the uk wild ftw contender series hook defeated johnny tv I like this Chris Jericho stuff. I know people don't want to see him, but man, it's turned into something really good. I enjoy him just knowing nobody wants him there. And he's just leading in, just just digging into it. Listen, you know, you gotta, he, he, he yeah. has, he, anybody else would have stuck to their guns and come out there look, doing the same exact thing. And this guy's like, okay, look, they got tired of me. I'm going to change this. Uh, I can't, you can't ask for something better than that. I, I I very much like it. I'm not I'm not against it because overall this is going to get Hook over. That's the whole goal here by doing yep. this. Hook defeated Johnny TV. Interesting how little they do with him. Johnny TV. Yeah, I don't know. Shibata Ricky, I, I, Shibata Rocky Romero. Shibata won. Brian Keith defeated Boulder. Brian Keith advance in this. They this also was a fun little match. Yeah, Brian, fun. Brian Keith is uh, kind of that that um, underground kind of guy. That's okay, kind of so fun. here's It'll a great and, and this is a great question. I would love to ask Dave. Okay, this is a great Dave question. Why? Why Brian Keith? Right, not in the sense of why is he in the position he's in. Why is he? Why does he have that little something? Not that that's all he has, obviously. But he has that little something that you stop and you're like, okay, I kind of like this guy. Mm -hmm. What is it? There's a thousand people out there that wrestle like him, that dress like him. Similar, they could have a similar gimmick, you know, similar in all ways. Why does he stand out and those don't? I would love to, and that that's part of this whole amazing sport. He has something. Now. Am I am I saying that's a world champion there? No, I'm not saying it's a world champion, especially today. I have no idea ten years from now what people develop into, but he has something. It. That's what the kids call it. It. Contract signing Willow Nightingale and Mercedes was shown. Uh the recap of it. This was really well done. And I think Mercedes is kind of changing her little by little. It's getting more comfortable in this getting more comfortable and not and not a wooden promo because that those wwe promos she does looking into yeah. the camera are really bad yeah so i'm it, hoping it, that she gets a more comfortable you, you know i up. every time i hear it now because it's such like a dated way actually to be honest with you if you want to talk about things getting dated in wrestling 
that like 2013 to 2017 promo style. Yes. Really dated. Uh, especially yeah. uh, especially for the women you know that performance center women's promo style uh nobody's cutting promos like that thank god especially Sadly, in wwe that was dusty Rhodes teaching that <laughs> but so, you know what yeah hmm. I, but for the time it was fine right yeah. I, I i would do that you know what it yeah it was dusty because it is that whole andy bella thing i used to do on mat men mm, right. you know because that's that's how all those promos were it, it just it's just terrible very manufactured. Christian and the Christian and the patriarchy were out there. Nick Wayne is hyped for his match against Swerve on Dynamite next week. Saying he was just the, the boy when he got attacked, but Christian made him into a man. Cool. <laughs> All right. This is it, this this connected. They connected this. Great. Yeah. Orange Cassidy defeated Isaiah Cassidy. This leads to Trent Beretta coming out and challenging Orange. To just a wrestling match at Devil or Nothing. <laughs> very uh, heel thing to do. It was very funny. heel thing. I know. I know. I laughed. I laughed so hard. Just a wrestling match. Serena Deeb defeated Anna J. Luther would come out after the match to steal uh, Serena's dojo flag. Tony would come out with Mariah May, and she stripped down and wore the flag as a towel. Was- you know. I commentary I, put this over. It was commentary. It was, it yeah. Was a chuckle. <laughs> I can't do justice, but commentary did well. Uh, Nick Wayne defeated Jack Cartwheel. What a fantastic wrestling name. He took a really, for a guy with the last name Cartwheel, he took a really bad bump, a nasty bump when Nick Wayne uh, walked away from his backspring Cartwheel over the top. It was, it looked fantastic. I was, oh, he's going to hit this move. And all of a sudden you see at the corner nope. of the screen. Well, Nick just walk away and he just fl- belly flopped. Yeah. So that had to hurt. <laughs> Brian Danielson and FTR. I guess he's the new CM Punk teaming with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Defeated Lance Archer be. and the Righteous. Uh, this whole story was that the Young Bucks put a hit on the on Team AEW. Are they calling it Team AEW? Yes, they are. They are. Mm. Okay. I don't like that. I don't either, but it's it's a way. The way the story was played out, it makes sense that your best your 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 best people um want to stand up for the company because it's it's defending Tony Khan essentially yeah. who got taken out. All right, whatever. Dynamite lineup uh for this week. It's a go home dynamite. Bang bang gang appears, Orange Cassidy and Will Ospreay the versus Trent Beretta and I, can't, I keep calling him Ricky Strong. Every name with an R, I keep thinking Ricky. I think it's because I've been thinking what the hell is going on with Ricky Starks. Uh, Trent Beretta, Roderick Strong. Okay, you know what? I like this. Makes sense. Makes sense. They're opponents for the pay-per-view. Here's the preview. Here's another one, right? Tony Storm, Mariah May versus Harley Cameron and Soraya. Cool. I'm waiting for that Mariah May turn because she's going to be incredible. She's really good. And with Camille going too... Right? Yeah. There's a few there's a few names coming in. Uh, Mia, the girl, the stardom girl that's coming in. So um and I think that's gonna be the match at uh Forbidden Door, Tony versus Mia for uh Mariah May on the pole match, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, I can see that. <laughs> that wouldn't be bad. Uh you also have Hook, uh Hook, Brian Keith, Shibata for a shot at the title. Swerve versus Nick Wayne, Takeshita versus Matt Seidel, Kyle O'Reilly, Malachi Black, John Moxley appears, Brian Danielson, and Satnam Singh. That's and a be David weird. and Goliath display. <laughs> so far, double or nothing. Here's what we have: Orange Cassidy, Tremperetta was added, obviously. IWGP title eliminator, John Moxley, Takeshita. This is not for the title. Now, is this not for the title due to politics because he's a DDT guy? Is this not for the title because it's going to mess up the plan? For New Japan in that title. Probably a little of both. Anarchy in the arena. The Elite. Young Bucks. Okada. Jack Perry versus Team AEW. FTR. Danielson and Darby Allen. TNT champion. Adam Copeland defends against Malachi Black in a barbed wire steel cage match. This is going to be nuts. That's going to be a nutty match. Mm-hmm. TBS title mm-hmm. on the line. Willow Nightingale defends against Mercedes Monet in her debut match in AEW. AW Women's World Champion Tony Storm defends against Serena Deeb. And Swerve Strickland defends against Christian Cage. 
This is being billed as a triple main event. I would say that Swerve Strickland match is going to be great. It's going to be very telling. The Tony Storm match, uh, cool. I'm into. Obviously, the TBS title. People want to see Mercedes in her match. I think the Adam Copeland match is going to be a sleeper. Oh, so I forgot this I... one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot right. possibly to match tonight. Roderick Strong defends against <laughs> Will, Will Ospreay for the international title. I totally skipped that one. This is a very strong card. However, is your main event strong enough? Because that's what matters at the end of the day when people are buying this pay-per-view. I don't know. However, I will say, you know, you also have to think of all the other things. Kenny Omega's status, and he, if he's going to show up, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Hangman Page and his status, and if he's going to show up. Britt Baker, her status. Adam Cole, his status, and he, if he's going to show up. And, of course, the big one, MJF. Yep. Is this when There's MJF returns? There's a pay-per-view in Long Island in a month. Six weeks, whatever that date is, in June, end of June. Very interesting, right, to consider. Does he show up there? Is that, does he wrestle? Is he back? Or do you bring him back a double or nothing, and that's, you know, you do a nice little NXT send-off for a pay-per-view where he shows up, and he's looking at Swerve, and you say, oh, man, it's happening. I don't know. But I would say if there's an opportunity to bring back MJF to TV and Hangman Page, and Kenny Omega, you got to do it. This is when it matters. You Look at your numbers. Look at your ratings. Look at your attendance. I mean, their attendance has actually done a little better. I think they're doing better with the cities. But these are all really strong questions to ask. We'll find out next week. We'll be back right after this. One last segment here, Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. What do you think is going to be the better show next weekend? King and Queen uh, of the Ring or Double or Nothing? That's a great question. Uh, Double or Nothing is probably going to be the b better show. Um, I, I would but imagine. King and Queen. Yeah, King, the King and Queen of the Ring show. It's going to be easy watch at, Saturday afternoon. And I got to tell you, the mat, like I said, I think this is the one of the better uh, King of the Ring tournaments overall they've done. So I think that's going to turn out to be so a well-wrestled show. Yeah. He here's the update on, on some of the ticket sales for Double or Nothing next week. Uh, this is as of yesterday. Mm -hmm. They've distributed 6,441 tickets. The current setup is only 7,000. There's about 600 tickets left. The upper deck has been altered uh, recently. They changed a lot. They, they're moving. There's about eight days, and they moved about 400 tickets in the last week. So, I mean, they'll be they'll they'll be full for sure. I, I think by the time that show comes, it'll be full. But I think next year is going to be very telling to run that to run Double or Nothing a month after WrestleMania. You know, two months after that's nah, two months after WrestleMania. It's enough time. Or no, a month after WrestleMania, yeah. Gonna be a little rough. We'll see. It's a weird market, Vegas. Very strange market. The weekends matter. There's a reason why Vegas wanted WWE there. It's it's the worst weekend of the year. Easter weekend in Las Vegas. So they wanted something to pump up the business there. We'll see what happens. But I'm looking forward to next week. We'll be back next week with a preview to double or nothing, a recap of what happened at King and Queen in the ring and everything else that happened in professional wrestling. I, I do, I do expect a surprise though. I, I personally, I, based on just slight chatter, nothing to confirm. I expect some sort of surprise at that show next week. That's it for this week, guys. We'll see y'all next time on wrestling observer live.